So I'm going to walk you through Classwork 5.2. I want you to try the two acceleration problems first, um, and then come back and make sure that you did them correctly. If you need a hint on the first problem, average acceleration, when we're talking about acceleration, it's going to be the slope of the velocity graph. And the average acceleration is just the slope between the two points that they give you. So we're going to be looking at t equals 10 and t equals 20 right here, um, which means you have a point 10, 23, and then a point 20, 30, and you just find the slope between those two points. So this is what I got, 7 tenths or 0.7 feet per minute squared. And then to represent it on the graph, we have just the slope between those two points. That's all average, average acceleration is on a velocity graph. Okay, so if you need a hint for the second question, the acceleration at t equals 15 seconds, because we have um, values in a table, not the actual function itself, we're going to need to do an approximation, either a left approximation, a right approximation, or a symmetrical approximation. So for a left approximation, you would use the, um, the 15 and the 10 together, that, those two points, 10, 23 and 15, 32. To do a right approximation, you would use the 15 and the 20 together. And for a symmetrical approximation, you would average those two values together. So go ahead and try that. So these are the three values that I got. Left approximation is a slope of 1.8. Right approximation is a slope of negative 0.4. And you can see that on the graph. Um, let me see if I can figure out a pointer here. Nope. OK. So on the graph, you can see that on the left-hand side of the graph, there is definitely more of a upper slope. And on the right-hand side of the graph, there's more of a downward slope. So you can see why one would be positive and one would be negative. And then the symmetrical approximation happens when you average the two values, the left and the right. It happens to be the same as the average acceleration. That's coincidence in this case, but when that happens, that is the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem is all about where on the graph does the average acceleration or the average slope match the instantaneous slope. So I'm going to go ahead and use this symmetrical approximation to do my um, my slope at that 15 right there. Okay, so next we're going to talk about position, which we talked about on Monday as being the position is the area under the graph. And we're going to talk about four different methods. Two of them you already know, but we're going to make them a little bit um, more explicit and also a little bit trickier and then we'll learn two new methods. Okay, so left we on sum, we're going to go ahead and do six equal subintervals. And when we do this, when we do a left Riemann sum, we are using the left-hand points on the graph to draw our rectangle. So the first rectangle would look like that and we're going to find the area in that rectangle. So the first point, this 0, 8, the 8 part is going to be the height of our rectangle. And then the distance on the t-axis or the x-axis is going to be the width of our rectangle, so that would be 5. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let you draw the next rectangles, and I'll do that as well. So I've gone ahead and drawn my rectangles. I've made each left-hand point a red dot. So I'm going to go ahead and also circle the points that we're using in red. Let me erase that blue part. Um, so the first rectangle is the 8, second one is 15, and then all the way up to 24. But notice that this... Um, this point right here and this 27 are not being used. They're kind of extra information for a left Riemann sum. So 
now all we need to do is add up all the areas of the rectangles. So I'll go ahead and get that started. So the area would be 5 times 8 plus another 5 between 5 and 10 times the next, I'll do it on this side, 5 and 10 times the next value. So we did 0 and 5 times 8, then we're going to do 5 and 10 times, between 5 and 10 times 15. And not all of these problems will have symmetrical um, distances or equal intervals is what they're called, equal subintervals. But in this problem, we do have equal subintervals. So I keep having a 5 times something and on and on. Go ahead and finish this up. See what you So you may notice that you could have done a shortcut for this one, and this only works if you have equal subintervals. If all the x widths on the um, each rectangle are the same, you could write this as 5 times 8 plus 15, each of these added together because it's just pulling out a 5 from each um, term. Okay, and if you do add all those up, I believe you should get 660. And in this graph, where we have velocity in feet per minute and time in minutes, this should be 660 feet. Okay, next we're going to talk about a right Riemann sum, which you do already know about, but I'm going to put a little twist on it. Okay, so let's talk about a right Riemann sum, and this time we're going to do three equal subintervals. So we're not going to be using all the data in here. So if I want three equal subintervals, you can think about all of this x-axis divided into three equal pieces. So it looks like I'm going to need to use the 10, the 20, and then either the 0 or the 30, depending on which end we're looking at. So in a right Riemann sum, I start on the right-hand side, and then I do my rectangle, and remember I'm going all the way over to 20, so I'm going to take that right-hand point to make my rectangle out of. And then I'm going to take the point right there, where my rectangle ended, and make my next rectangle and then the point right there where my rectangle ended and make my next rectangle. So in the table, I'm using the width between 30 and 20 times the first point on the right. So that would be the 27, which is right here. That's that 27 again. And then I'll take the distance between the 10 and the 20 times the first number there, and that was the 30. And then I'll take the distance between 0 and 10 times that 23. And then there are several data points that we're just not going to use. We only needed three of them. So go ahead and do that calculation for that area and see what you get. So when I do my math, I get each subinterval is an equal width of 10. So again, I could have done that shortcut where I did 10 times parentheses all the heights. Um, and then I used my three y values, my velocity values, and I got 800. And again, this should be feet. All right, next we're going to talk about a midpoint Riemann sum, which is something we haven't done in class before. Okay, so let's talk about a midpoint Riemann sum. And this time, let's do two, oops, two. <laughs> okay, so two equal subintervals. So I want to take my total distance, and I want to divide it in half. So when I look at that in the table, there's only three points that I am looking at right here. Now here's what's interesting, oh darn, okay, we can't do that, undo, okay, so when you're dealing with midpoint Riemann sums, you actually have to have midpoints, so that wouldn't work. So if I do three like I had originally planned, that will work. 
Okay, so if we do three equal subintervals, just like last time, we need three equal pieces. So I'm dividing kind of up into this, like that. And a midpoint Riemann sum, we actually use the x values that are between, that are in the middle of each rectangle. So let me change colors here. So I'm going to use this x value right here. I probably shouldn't make it a line. I'm going to use this x value, this x value, and this x value. So I'm going to use this point, this point, and this point to make my rectangles. So here's my first rectangle, like that. And then I'm going to use this, po oops, this point to make my next rectangle, that point right there. So there's my next rectangle. And I just use the point, literally midpoint of the rectangle to make each rectangle. Okay, and now we're going to just find the area just like normal. My width is still the distance between the 0 and 10, just like last time. But this time my y value is going to be that midpoint height. So go ahead and try that. Okay, and then when I calculate that out, I get 710 feet. And next we're going to talk about trapezoidal uh, midpoint, I mean trapezoidal Riemann sums. Okay, so let's go ahead and do six equal subintervals on this. This is our last one, guys, almost there. Um, so for trapezoidal Riemann sums, instead of making rectangles, we make trapezoids. And we're actually going, so because we're using all six subintervals, we're actually going to use all six, all seven points. Because for a trapezoid, we have like this. That's my first trapezoid. These are going to be very, I'll switch colors. They almost exactly follow the graph. You can see how this is a much better approximation for the area under a curve, or it can be, usually it is, much better for curvy graphs. Okay, so you can finish up drawing those. Okay, so I have my trapezoids drawn. I don't know if you noticed, but some of them are overestimates. Some of them are higher than the graph, and some of them are lower than the graph. Um, that happens. And to find a trapezoidal Riemann sum, you need to know the area of a trapezoid, which there are a couple different ways to write the formula. I like the base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 times height. And to think about this, you actually should think about the trapezoid kind of sideways. So base 1 in this first trapezoid is going to be there, and base 2 is there. And then the height has to be perpendicular to those, so it is still that um, subinterval distance. So the height is going to be 5. Mommy. Base 1. Mommy. Come on. Okay, this video is taking 15,000 hours. All right, so we have B1 and B2. So to find the area of that first trapezoid, I'm going to add the two Bs together. So my total A is going to be 15 plus 8, or 8 plus 15, I guess, would be a, um, in the same order that I had the formula. And then 2 times my height, which is, remember, is that horizontal distance, because our trapezoid is turned on its side, so that's times 5. You're going to repeat that for every rectangle, I mean trapezoid. Okay, so now I have done all my trapezoids. I had to write them smaller, so we redid that. And my final answer over here on the side is 707.5 feet. So hopefully that gives you a good Measure? start, a good start on the four types of Riemann sums. Remember, you're not always going to have equal subintervals, so you have to pay attention to that. You might be multiplying by a different base each time on <coughs> any of. <coughs> Sorry.
sorry about that, on any of the um, problems, just pay close attention to that and whether or not you can use a shortcut that you may be noticing. All right, good luck today. We'll see you on Thursday. Are you